I spent three hours reverse engineering Sabri Subi's $25 million agency funnel so you don't have to. And this is by far the most sophisticated agency client acquisition strategy that I have seen to date. And it's most likely way simpler than you think. And so in this video, I'll show you exactly what ads he runs, how he built his funnel and how you can copy and paste this strategy into your agency with as little as $50 a day on meta ads. And of course, if you need a little instant gratification, I have rebuilt the entire funnel inside of Perspective Funnels. So you can just copy and paste that into your free account right away with all the different pages, all the different mechanisms and all the different automations. And so with that being said, let's jump right in. We're starting out with the entire strategy because at the end of the day, when you look into Sabri Subi's ad account or when you look into Sabri Subi's agency's ad account, what you'll see is that he has different funnels going and different links behind his ads. And so for that, I actually uh, built this quick uh, sheet here to just break down the entire structure of the ad account. And so at the end of the day, what we're seeing here is three different funnels that are concatenated to each other that at the end of the day are spitting out strategy calls with the sales team. And so the reason why this is genius is because at the end of the day, people rarely converge on the first touch point, right? Especially if you're selling a service or anything that is higher priced, it's very, very difficult to actually ask for a conversion and for somebody to come on a sales call with you um, if you haven't had touch points with them before. And so asking for a high ticket commitment or a commitment to a sales call, for example, too soon definitely reduces conversion and overall most likely makes you pay more per qualified call with your sales team. Then what we can see, if we just take a look at the ad account structure again, or at the structure in general, you can see that he runs lead magnet funnels. So these two up here before even asking for people to come on a sales call. And the reason why this works is because at the end of the day, it will most likely capture your leads at a way lower price, right? And all of these leads can then, of course, also be turned into ready to buy leads through the right nurturing, through the right email marketing. And so with this strategy, he also focuses on educating his buyer before they even come into the sales call. And so you can imagine if people have seen your videos, if they know exactly what you offer and they have a sales call versus they have never had a touch point with you and don't really know what your service is, they will most likely also not convert to paying customers. And so he really focuses on that educational part here. And then what we can see from there on, he actually takes the leads from that funnel and retargets them with the strategy call funnel in this case, where the sole focus is to actually get people on the appointment, right? So we have a multi-step strategy. He's essentially splitting the top of funnel and filling the top of funnel and then filling the sales team's calendar into two different phases. And then I'll break down in the next section how he actually builds up these funnels for maximum conversion. And so I'll first start out with the lead magnet funnels and then I'll show you exactly how you can build that yourself within perspective. At the end of the day, as I already said, right, he's focusing on that first micro commitment, on that first conversion by actually giving people something super tangible with his lead magnets and so in this case he's actually running two right now first of all the seo lead magnet funnel and then second of all this the facebook ads uh, lead magnet funnel and at the end of the day they are exactly the same right so both offer a specific asset both offer a lead magnet to drive the first conversion to get the first contact data and generally the structure is very simple and the only thing that is different is the content so what he's actually offering and so let's break this down in, in detail if we just quickly zoom in here for the seo lead magnet funnel what we can see here is he has a very very strong headline in this case of course focus also on the results that the desired customer or that the target audience has, right? So in here, he says brand new SEO G5 method opens the floodgates to free traffic and makes you a god on Google. And so of course, if the audience wants to have traffic from Google, right, if that's the desired business result, then that's exactly what we should be aiming for and communicating within our headline. Then thereafter, we have a nice mock-up of the actual product or of the actual lead magnet. And since we're selling something digital here, since we're selling something that isn't easy to touch or can't be touched in general, implementing a mock-up into your funnel actually helps with driving conversions because all you essentially do is turning something intangible into something tangible and you're upping the perceived value of that specific offer. It seems like we're actually getting something that we can touch. And so this is also what I usually recommend with any funnel that you might build. And so from there on, we see a bunch of proof here with different logos of media companies that he's been featured on as far as I see. And then also what is really, really interesting, he uses a lot of text to actually sell you, right? So you can have different versions of assets that help you do the heavy lifting and convince people to actually opt for your offer. In his case, he's actually focusing a lot on text, which I find very interesting. You see that in a lot of successful funnels, but it's definitely a little bit rarer. But if we just quickly break down how this text is structured, first of all, honorable mention, I personally think that is quite uh, quite nice that he does that, but essentially has an automated script running that just says automated today's date, right? Uh, sorry, updated today's date. So essentially in this case, it says updated uh, 16th of uh, February. Today isn't the 16th. And so before we dive into the text and break down the text, what I find very, very interesting is that he uses these variables and uses these elements where it actually shows a specific date or a, a a date close to today's date. And the reason this works is because at the end of the day, we're all very skeptical, right? And with that, he essentially handles the objection right away that this is outdated content. So today is the 6th of March. Uh, in this case, it says uh, 16th of February. So it's only a couple weeks old. And that pretty sure because he's using that element throughout his funnel 
over and over again that actually helps with building trust and actually helps people or actually makes people think that this is really new content, this is fresh content, this is something novel to read through. And then if we take a look at the text, I noted that down here in the bullet points as well, but essentially he goes through explaining why the marketing strategy inside the lead magnet is best. And once again, going back to the point of having your audience educated before they even join the sales call, this is of course super important because before I even want to know about SEO and how to do SEO successfully, I need to be committed and convinced on the fact that SEO is exactly the strategy I should be implementing. And so he handles that with the text that from there on includes a brief personal story to enhance trust and expert status one more time. If we just quickly go through the funnel, you can see here that he, for example, uh, says, hey, well, for starters, we've spent over $50 million on generating traffic online, right? Once again, enhancing the expert status so people are actually trusting in him. Um, then from there on, he uh, addresses common objections up front. And you can see that this text actually continues over two pages, essentially. And then he actually pitches the, the lead magnet. So what is actually included, right? These eight bulletproof steps are the most battle tested strategies we've ever discovered. And then from there on, we have a nice call to action. And what is hidden behind that call to action will be revealed in a minute. And so following that, we one more time have a nice logo section uh, just to increase trust again. And then we have a nice list element that actually showcases one more time what is actually included. So it shows what you're tangibly getting uh, after opting in for that lead magnet. The rest of the entire funnel is proof, right? So he shows screenshots uh, from successful customers or from successful campaigns. And this goes on for quite a bit. And so what we found from building hundreds of funnels is that actually proof is one of these elements that has one of the biggest impacts on conversion rates overall. So if you can only add one thing to your Funnel, it's ideally more social proof. It's proof that you actually are qualified to talk about what you're talking about in that funnel. And if we now take a look at what the CTA leads to, is if we click on that button, we're actually getting a pop-up that asks for the first name, email, and phone number. A couple of conversion driving elements in here as well that I would love to point out. So if we just take a look at that form, you can see it has this download your free report now before this page comes down headline. And at the end of the day, it's just a clear call to action including a nice urgency element, right? So before this page comes down, just increases the urgency a little bit uh, as to you grabbing that lead magnet and grabbing access, entering your data, uh, because there might be the risk that he's actually taking that down, which I don't think <laughs> there, uh, it's actually there. But at the end of the day, this is definitely something improving the urgency, increasing the urgency that you're communicating, something that also helps with uh, driving conversions. And also one element that I personally very much appreciate is this loading bar here. So it's roughly at 75%, right? And by indicating that there's only one last step and you actually completed a majority of the journey, ready to get to your desired result, in this case, downloading the lead magnet, you make people more likely to actually opt in. And the reason for that is that we are all subject to the so-called sunk cost bias, right? So once we started something, we are way more uh, likely to complete it. And with that, he's playing to that psychological pattern. Um, and it also makes us think, you know, that the finish line is not too far away. And then one other thing that I would love to point out here, he's asking for first name, email address, and phone number. Uh, we have a lot of funnels that are just asking for the email address, but at the end of the day, if you have a sales set funnel, right? So your goal is to get people on a sales call, to speak to your sales team, to then sell them on a $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 a month service, Getting the phone number is super, super crucial because even if people are not converting on booking a sales call with you, you can still call them up with your team of setters or as a setter in general to then get them to still book a call, even though they're not directly reacting uh, to the option to book a sales call. Cool. And that exact funnel is essentially repeated, but for a different service. So up here, he's pitching SEO as a main marketing strategy. In here, he's doing the same thing for Facebook ads one more time, but the structure, as you can see, is exactly the same. We have a nice headline. We have a mock-up. We have a sales text in here. Then we have some more proof. And one more time, the form that I just brought down. Cool. Now we're moving on to the strategy call, which is of course where the entire magic happens because all these funnels do after you completed the opt-in is essentially redirect to the strategy call quiz funnel. Because of course, as he's selling a service, he wants his main goal is to get you on a sales call with his sales team. And so this is exactly what the page looks like. So in here, it says success, your free report will arrive in 10 minutes while you wait, watch this. So it's now focusing all your attention on this video sales setup, right? So this main video that now is supposed to do the heavy lifting on selling you on actually working with this agency because now now, all you did was opt in for something free, a free lead magnet. But now, of course, he wants to introduce his offer and make sure he's actually getting sales from the traffic he's driving to these lead magnet funnels. And so one more time, we have a very, very strong headline with the business result in focus. Copy and paste this wild new 7.8 billion unicorn funnel with 14 clicks in just 10 minutes to cruise past 100 grand a month. So he's definitely a very, very good copywriter, as you can see. But if we just quickly take a look at this page, a couple of elements that stick out. So as I said, video in the center, the main goal is to get people to watch that video because in that video, it's a 25 minute sales letter uh, where he's basically pitching his agency and pitching you on working with him. Then we have a nice call to action. Claim your free 30 minute strategy session. Be quick. Free spots are almost gone by February. So one more time using this variable that I mentioned before, where he's pulling the current month to essentially induce some urgency. So for people to actually then convert and feel like they could be missing out if they're not acting right now. Then we have some more proof, a couple of faces in here, a couple of reviews, 6,000 reviews, one more time, the logos, and that is essentially all there is to this entire page. There's nothing more. 
But of course, the personalization doesn't end with him just reusing dates or inducing more urgency by taking the current month. But he also uses data or reuses data that he collects throughout the funnel. For example, in this exit pop-up. In there, it says, hold on there, Niels, not too fast. <laughs> Basically, just pulls you again into that video sales letter for you to actually then convert on a sales call with the sales team. And I find that very, very interesting because we've seen this across our funnels as well, um, using personalization. So things like reusing the name or things like using the current date actually is proven to help increase conversion rates by almost 100%. So one of our cases, Florian, a longtime customer of ours, he basically just upped his funnel conversion rate by 81%. That's almost double the revenue that you can make just by using personalization. And from there on, when you click on this claim your free 30 minute strategy session, all he does is essentially lead you into this quiz funnel. And the reason why quiz funnels work so well is a couple of things. First of all, we have interactivity. So when people actually interact with your funnel, they are more engaged and thus more likely to convert. Then with every question that they're answering, they are giving you micro commitments, right? So with every step, they're investing more into your brand, investing more into your product, investing more into your offer and uh, then when you're asking them about their contact details about the payment details they are proven to actually convert at a way higher chance and so from there on as i said that's the quiz and here he's asking a bunch of questions one more time asking for the name then asking for the email address to then of course also ensure that when people are dropping out of the funnel at any point in time at any question that they can actually reach back out to you and get you back into that funnel so he's using a lot of retention strategies here as well then we have a bunch of questions about our business or about the business. So in this case, first, what do you sell, right? These questions are then used to actually pre-qualify the leads so that the sales team does not waste time on any lead that might not be qualified. Um, so that's the first thing. So as I said, he's asking a bunch of questions about the business uh, to make sure that only qualified people are hitting the calendar. Now, interestingly, he's not only using questions to collect data about the business, collect data about the leads to pre-qualify them, but he's also using questions to make sure people are actually committed to showing up to the sales call and asking these questions questions is proven to help with a show up percentage because converting people on the sales call is one piece of the equation. The other is actually getting them to the sales call and then closing them within the sales call. So he's asking these commitment questions, for example, on a scale of one to 10, one being I'm fine where I am and 10 being I'll do anything to reach my revenue goals. What number are you? He's asking for the commitment that the lead has, right? So how hot is the lead on actually solving the problem or getting to the desired result? And there's actually more questions that he's using to get more commitments from the leads. Uh, it's not in these screenshots right here, but it's actually built out in perspective as well, right? So one of these extra questions is, do you pinky promise that if you qualify for a phone call, you will show up at the selected time? So one more time getting verbal commitment. And as I said, this is actually proven to also help with the show up rate. And so after you submit that form, he's showing you this uh, page animation or this animation on the page where it basically says like, please be patient as we verify your answers. And this also helps with the perceived value of uh, actually being able to get on a sales call, right? So in the background, there's nothing much happening, not a fancy calculation or anything. It basically just based on the answers identifies if you are a qualified lead or a not qualified lead. And then after that, he He's leading you to the Calendly office sales team for you to book in appointments. And now if you're not qualified, he's actually pitching you on a downsell. So in this case, as he has his book, sell it like crazy, right? He's selling this book uh, for I think five to six bucks or five to 10 bucks uh, to still make some revenue off the leads that are not directly qualified to work with him on a big retainer basis, but to still make some sales from the traffic that he's running through that funnel. Cool. And so one further thing that I want to point out here is that when you are looking at this Calendly, you see that the next three days are the only days available. And the reason for why he would be doing that is because uh, what we found across many funnels and across many sales calls is that at the end of the day, the longer uh, the time frame from the point of booking to where the actual appointment is happening, the less likely people are actually to show up. And so we really want to make sure that the appointment that they're booking is very in a very near future. And so he's doing that perfectly here by only offering the next few days. And that's a simple setting you can also set up in Calendly. And that is essentially already all the magic there is. And so, as I said, I rebuilt the entire King Kong funnel inside of Perspective so you don't have to. And let's quickly run down what it looks like. So we can see here it has an entirety of 20 pages, we first of all have the landing page, which is focused on the lead magnet or the report in this case, right? Then we have the opt-in with a nice loading bar up here, as I already pointed out. Then we are leading them to a VSL with a very, very strong headline with a quick success message. But the main focus here is to get them on actually converting on the strategy session, on the sales call with your sales team. And so this is the exact structure here. Then from there on, we're pitching the call once again, using personalization, as I already said, uh, because it actually helps with driving conversions. Then we have the quiz questions, pre-qualifying the traffic. And last but not least, also that loading and animation here where you're automatically redirected. And this can also be set up quite simply in perspective. And you can see here, it says automatic redirect enabled. If you want to enable that for one specific page, you can just click on the three dots and then to automatic redirect and then set it up for yourself. And thereafter, we have a nice Calendly integration in here where you can just book a call, right? So this page was a little bit more conversion optimized. And then depending on if the lead is qualified or unqualified, we have a confirmation or a downsell page as also depicted in Sabri's funnel. And so that is actually the entire strategy that he used to build his agency to $25 million a year. And last but not least, I want to dive a little deeper into the ads because that is of course also a big piece of the puzzle. And so 
for the lead magnet funnels, what we can see here is that he's using ads that don't really look like ads. In this case, for the SEO one, he's actually using ads that more or less look like uh, news, right? So he's even using the breaking news uh, text here and then builds out these types of creatives to make them feel more organic. Because at the end of the day, people are so used to seeing ads and people hate being sold to. So if you can make sure that your ads are looking like organic content or don't really look like ads, they're way they're clicked way more as well. And so these are the, the most successful ones as far as I see from how long they have been running. And then all he does is uh, direct the clicks from these ad creatives over to the lead magnet funnels. And so for the Facebook one, he's using a bit more of a meme style, not necessarily like a, a media style or a new style that he's been using for the SEO one. But I'm pretty sure that he tested multiple variations and actually found out that this is working best. Once again, these ads look like memes, right? So it looks like content that you would see in your feed either way. And it doesn't really scream buy my product, it doesn't really scream an ad. So people are more likely to click on it and thus convert on the Facebook ads lead magnet funnel. And so last but not least for the strategy call quiz funnel, uh, he's not only redirecting the people from the success page from these lead magnet funnels to the strategy call quiz, but he of course also drives direct traffic from Meta to this funnel. And how he does that is first of all, through VSLs and feeds, because as I said in the beginning, it's very, very hard to convert people on directly booking a call with your agency and then selling them on thousands and thousands of dollars a month. So what we really want to invest in is education. And so either we do that through a funnel like this, where we sell them on the unique mechanism, we sell them on the strategy, we sell them on our process, or we actually have another content piece that does the heavy lifting for us and educates our prospect uh, on the process and on the service that we have and uh, on the company that we are. And so if we take a look at this ad, you can see here it's a 25 minute ad and that's exactly the VSL that he's using on this page here too. So all he does is basically just refactor that, repurpose it, turn it into a nice format that also fits in feed on Meta. And then he's running that as an ad, directly sending the traffic from that ad to this funnel. I think it's safe to assume that a majority of these ads are actually retargeting the traffic that is generated by the top of funnel funnels here, because at the end of the day, he's getting very cheap leads here. He's getting very cheap engagement. And so with that, he can just retarget these people, educate them more on the process directly in feed or within the actual landing page. And from there on, lead them into the strategy called quest to book a sales appointment. And so if you look at a couple further ads, the only other ads that are leading directly to the strategy called quest funnel is either a case study with customers. And the reason that works is, of course, if you know about King Kong, if you know about the agency already, if you know exactly what they're doing, the only thing that might keep you from not booking a call with them or not working with them is if you don't believe that this is something of value at this, or if you don't believe that you can actually achieve the desired result uh, with that agency, with that service. So he really focuses on social proof throughout the funnel, but also in feed, really having multiple case studies in there. For example, saying, hey, we spent 15,000 and returned 60,000. So upping the perceived likelihood of achievement. And these are the only two types of content pieces that we see in feed that we see in this meta ads library that are sending traffic directly to the strategy called quiz funnel. And then we have further variations of the VSLs, right? So in this case, a 15 minute VSL, but at the end of the day, once again, educating the buyer on the actual product, on the actual service, on the agency to then make sure they're converting on the sales call. All right, and so the summary of this, if you wanna launch something similar for yourself, all you would have to do is duplicate the funnel into your free perspective account. As I said, it would look something like this, where you have the entirety of the pages built out with the different quiz questions, with the different logic, as well as the automatic video direct and the split of qualified and unqualified people. And from there on, you can just adjust this to your offer. You can just adjust this to your agency and basically have it up and running within a day. Within perspective, you can then optimize performance through the metrics tab or just manage the entire sales process in the contacts tab or in the CRM. And so then all that's left to do is to spin up simple ad creators for your lead magnet and you can keep it simple and start with images just like Sabri does. And last but not least, you can spin up a lead campaign on Meta at 10 to 50 bucks a day. And if you want to know how to specifically do that, you can check out the links in the video description. There's more content on Meta ads on our channel. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Wishing you a great rest of your day and see you next time.